All right, let's see how to set up and use Joe Blocks. All right, so here we have a set of gauge blocks, and these are these are grade B. These are uh, intended really to be like shop grade. Uh, they're not the highest precision, but they're plenty good enough for things that you would need to do on the shop floor. So, first thing you need to know is you you don't ever want to ding up these things or scratch you know the uh, the mating surfaces. Uh, they're really precise, even though you know I, I say these are low-grade ones. They're they're pretty accurate. Uh, they're they're lapped to within millionths of an inch. So, what would you want to use one of these things for? Well, a really good use for them is is for a standard. I got this Mitsutoyu micro micrometer here, and it this one has a vernier scale, and measures to a, a tenth of an inch or ten thousandths of an inch. Uh, See, there's a calibration sticker on here. It says uh, 9 4 1970. Uh, we might want to check that. <laughs> so, whenever you put these things away, you always want to make sure to put a film of grease on them, especially on the faces. And, uh, you know, I'm going to recommend this extreme CMD Extreme Pressure Lube. Uh, that's number three. Uh, it's really good stuff. It doesn't seem to dry out super bad and, you know, seems to last really good. So anyway, I got a little bit of mineral spirits on here. So I'm going to wipe that off. And you can see how nice that face is. It's just beautiful. When I bought these, I got them. They were new old stock. I think they were manufactured in 94. And they were all still on the paper. They've never been opened yet. So anyway, here's my two inch inch block and you know I clean it off mineral spirits but it's good practice to kind of wipe them off on your wrists or the back of your hand or something like that you get any little bit of dust or anything that might be on there off well let's see what this thing measures We're, uh, we're showing a little bit less than a thousandth of an inch here. Let's see. Oh, turn it loose. <laughs> Six tenths, I think. Yeah, seven tenths. Oh. Anyway, somewhere in that ballpark. So what we need to do is uh, adjust this thing. So let's have a look at how to do that. All right, so you see there's a little small hole right here. That's where your wrench goes. And depending on which way you need to turn it, you just put the wrench in there and turn it that way. Let's try that. Measure our block again here. Okay, that's a lot closer. We're at, uh, we're only out about three tenths now. Let's turn it a little bit more. I think I'm going the wrong direction. I got five tenths now. We have to go this way. Let's try that. Looks 
like it's lined up pretty good right on zero. Very, very close. Okay, I don't see it lining up on anything else. I guess we got that adjusted. All right. So I'm going to show you something else here. We're going to ring these two blocks together. Okay. And to ring them together, clean them off really good first, wipe them with your wrists. And then you take, you start right here in the center, put the corner on, and you slide it across. So it makes kind of an X. And then you twist it. Okay, now they're stuck together, right? So there's no magnetism involved in this, but what it what it is, there's a couple of three things that it's, you know, I guess it's not really well understood. Part of it, you have a very thin film. In fact, it's actually accounted for, I think it's 25 microns or something like four millionths of an inch, that the oil film will be between these blocks. They're actually ground or lapped a little bit less than what they're stated at. Anyway, but you have a little film of oil in there. When you force all that air out, the atmospheric pressure that's everywhere is pushing these blocks together. And it, you know, it's really pushing hard. And the other thing, that they're lapped so flat and parallel, you know, perfectly, I mean, as perfect as we can get them anyway, that the atoms are actually close enough and they, they can actually attract to each other. So you get kind of a, uh, I forget the name of this force, but, but that's what's drawing it together. So, anyway, uh, what we're going to check here now, so I don't know if anybody's got any depth mics. This one here is... Who made this one? I think this is a Lufkin. Yeah, this is Miller Falls, actually. It's kind of interesting. You know what? I've rung the wrong box together. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me just take this apart real quick, and I'll get another one. Alright, fill that clean. Might as well get both faces. And then it's here. Okay, so we're going to ring the one and the two inch block together. Slide them over. Give them a little twist. Whoops. Yeah, messed that up somehow. There we go. Okay, then we're rung together. So, what I want to do. I want to actually set up a situation that's kind of something like like this here. And then I can what I can do, the problem with you know, if you just had this block by itself, it'd be pretty hard to measure it, you know, off the edge and into nothing, right? And you couldn't even trust a surface plate really. I mean it's better than nothing, but this ain't bad. So what we can do here, we can set up our Our micrometer down to one inch. Pretty close. We'll try and measure this. I wish this one had a ratchet. Let's see if I can't block your blocking the view. Okay. Let's see what that says. And this one's off. About a half a thousandth. All right, so let's calibrate this guy. Okay, so this is sort of an unusual sort of an adjustment here, but you've got a rod that's threaded and you've got this little cap. That's where you set your calibration at. So I don't really have any good way of holding this, uh, this rod. I'm gonna wrap it with a leather glove. 
hold it. Let's see if we can turn this thing just a little bit. All right. Cause no damage to that. That thing still looks good up there, so I guess that's an okay way of doing it. I wish I had the little, I'm sure this thing originally would have came with a wrench special for that. It's long gone now. Put the little cap back on. Alright. Let's see what it says here. Sorry if you can't see what's going on here. It's very difficult to show it to the camera. Yeah. All right. Well, we got that one back in spec now. Okay, so there's another thing you can do with the gauge blocks. Another good use for gauge blocks, and I, I really don't have the right setup to even show you this, but. You can use a, this is a little surface gauge, and I don't have a way of attaching a micrometer to this, but let's say you have two parts, say these, these you know, say one of these, say this is your, your block you're going to use to measure, and of course these are the precision vases, I'm just sort of giving you an example. If you set up a micrometer and, and zero it out on this, and this is the part you're checking, you can move it over here and you can confirm that this is that size and, and you can work as accurate as your indicator is and your blocks well, of course the blocks are probably more more accurate than the indicator anyway but uh, that's another good way that you can use chill blocks all right well let's try building up a stack let's try with uh, one inch, 651 thousandths, and two tenths. So there, there's a methodology to how you build up these stacks. And what you kind of need to do is, most people want to just grab and grab the one inch block and start working that way. And I mean, yeah, we know the one inch block's going to be in there, but really you need to remove the lowest decimal place you can first. So. The way these are set up, you've got a five thousandths, a ten thousandths block, and then you've got a hundred thousandths point one, a hundred thousandths point two, so forth, all the way up to, uh, let's see, it's one hundred and nine, or excuse me, one hundred thousandths and nine tenths. So, from that point on, it goes up to uh, only down to one thousandths. So we've got a hundred and one thousandths uh, running consecutively all the way up to a hundred and ten thousandths. And then it starts counting by tens. So we've got 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200. And at, at 200, then it starts counting in hundred thousandths. So it goes 200, 300, 400, 500. And then you get up into the inches, so one inch, two inch, three inch. So this would be a pretty easy one here. So all you have to do is just subtract it. Now the, the only block we got that can get rid of that, oh, let me get rid of that, is one hundred thousandths and two tenths. And that right here so we'll set that over here so now that gives us so now we've got one one inch 651 we have to figure out now so now we have to get rid of that one so to do that we're going to need 101 thousands so that's pretty easy. 101. That leaves us one inch, 550 thousandths. All right. 
So now we need to get rid of this, this 50 thousandths. And there is no 50 thousandths block, but we do have 150 thousandths. Okay. So we'll, whoops. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and subtract 150 thousandths out of here. That'll leave us with 400 thousandths. Oh, excuse me, one inch, 400 thousandths. So we'll grab our 400 thousandths block. Let's set it out here. And the only thing left, of course, after that is one inch. Might as well finish our math out. That zeroes all this. So that's pretty easy, right? So now let's ring them together just for kicks, huh? Remember, start them in the middle, slide them across each other, and boy, you can really feel it sticking right there. Like that. There, see? Do that. These are kind of fun to play with. They also call these slip gauges, but that seems to be uh, sort of the European name for these, which I think is kind of funny because it was invented by a, a European. All right, so there's our stack, and that is exactly, or at least as close as my shop can make, one inch, 651 thousandths, and two tenths. All right, so that's one that's pretty simple. Now. Here's one that's a little more complicated. So we're going to go with one inch, 682 thousandths, and six tenths. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and break this stack down and put it back in the box. All right. So, sort of the same methodology here. So we got to get that tenths off of there. So we're going to need. 100 thousandths and 6 tenths block. That's right here. Yeah. So that throws that. So now... All right. Now we've got 582 thousandths left. So one inch, 582 thousandths. So your temptation would be to take the uh, block that's 102 thousandths out but then the problem is you got you know this 80 it's going to be 80 thousandths maybe 480 thousandths and there's no nothing we can make here that'll do that what you got to do is to make this either a five or a zero so the block that will do that is 130 thousandths Okay, so we'll subtract that, so it leaves two, and that makes that a five, and that leaves four, and one inch. Okay, so now let's grab that 130 thousandths block, it's right there. So now we've got one inch 452, so we need to get the 1002 block out that will get rid of our two so I want the, or excuse me 102 thousandths and zero is that okay. one inch 450 so that's pretty easy now did I mess up here already <laughs> No, I haven't messed up yet. Okay. So there is no 50 thousandths block, so the next closest thing we've got is 150 thousandths. There it is. Let's drag that, leaves us with one inch, 300 thousandths. And we've got a 300 thousandths block. 
We'll put that out here. Oops. The right face down. All right. So put our 300 down. That gets rid of all that and leaves the one inch. So there you go. So that's how you got to get around if you end up with a, you know, kind of an odd number in this area right here. That's got to either be a five or, or a 10 or a zero. And whatever block you can find that will, will do that. In our case, it was the hundred and thirty thousands. But anyway, there's another use for that. Or, uh, sorry, that's how you build up a stack. Right, if you guys enjoy old machinery and seeing how to get it fixed, why don't you go ahead and subscribe, click on the old horizontal mill over here, and uh, check the videos that are coming up here below.